What is up everybody, Benoit here and welcome to Tactical Fellowship. The purpose of today's video is to share a little bit of the why behind why I went with an Agency Arms P320 trigger for my 320 blaster. I want to get right to the point with you guys and share the big reason, number one reason why I went with this trigger in my 320. But first, go ahead and stick your thumb up YouTube's anti-gun loving hole by liking and subscribing. And why not find me at tacticalfellowship.com, MeWe, Rumble, and Parlor for when they eventually cancel us all. Guys, it's all about the blade safety, baby. I grew up shooting Springfield XDs. They have a blade safety. Don't hate on the XDs. They're okay pistols. I like the safety mechanism of the blade safety and it's the 320 and so if you're like me you're getting a little bit sick of every year hearing some sort of litigation going through the courts of these things going off uncommanded in somebody's holster which by the way I can't help believe has something to do with the holster itself how mechanically a gun goes off by itself magically I just don't get so a blade safety on the 320 is absolutely fantastic stinking cool trigger nothing in there look at that it's not going anywhere if you push high it's not going to get if you need to push low on it really fantastic that right there is worth the price of admission i'm going to put it in all my 320s it is just an extra layer of safety since i do not have the m17 or m18 with the manual safety which i would probably consider wanting to get if i if i was going to like appendix carry this or something like that just to have another safety just to be sure that things are locked in place and so they don't blow your balls off which brings us to Benoit's two taco bet. And I bet you two tacos, this is gonna become your favorite trigger. And here's why. The Agency 320 trigger comes with a handful of springs that if you install on the sear, in the sear housing, and then on the trigger bar, it's gonna improve the trigger pull on this gun. And it's a really good thing. I believe probably the best it's gonna get. Check this out. You got your standard take up, you hit the ledge and then you mush past it. Agency trigger, similar take up, and then you hit the wall and you mush past it. But now check it out with the springs in it. But I thought, Ben, you said you weren't comfortable doing trigger springs, and you're right. I did say that in my last video, but I figured if basement Joe Biden can win more votes in the popular election than anyone else in mankind, I can install a couple springs. Speaking of the install, it wasn't bad, but I suggest going to Sig Guy's YouTube channel for the full tutorial on how to replace the springs and the easiest way to get the trigger in there. So here you have your standard take up and you hit the wall and you kind of mush past it and it breaks. And let's look at that again. Decent reset, no better or worse. Squeeze and it breaks. The difference is small, but it is perceptible to the pad of my finger that this trigger is smoother and lighter and offers less resistance than the Sig Custom Works trigger. Also worth noting the FDE color. If you go to Omaha Outdoors, it looks like a painted brown, kind of icky, and didn't quite like it, but I'm glad I got it because it actually looks much nicer in person. So all in all, stinking cool trigger. Stinking cool trigger. Well, my dudes and ladies, I hope this has been helpful to you as you navigate Triggerland 320. And as always, ride fast, shoot straight, and we'll see you next time. Freaking awesome.